I find most interesting about using the HPTI is using it in different contexts, especially in leadership positions and looking at the nuances in different types of leadership um, and different leadership positions. So in the development of the HPTI, we have an optimal zone, an optimal banding of what optimal leadership looks like. And this is based on the results of hundreds and hundreds of senior leaders and thousands and thousands of people looking at what the normal range of personality traits is and what the optimal range of personality traits is for leaders. And in that optimal band, we're looking at you know, multinational CEOs, global leaders of large companies. But even within those companies, you do get nuance and difference in the personality traits of senior leaders in different types of positions. So when we're looking at the optimal bands, we're essentially looking at the optimal traits for strategic leaders. So we're looking at the CEO position, um, we're looking at the kind of driving force of the company, of the vision, of the long-term plan, and that kind of visionary strategic leader is the optimal zone for that. Um, but when we look at different positions, like if we're looking at the operations manager, who is a senior leader in the company, who has a really important position, um, they might have different types of traits. So when we look at the strategic leader, who has very high ambiguity acceptance, who is good at dealing with complexity, um, with kind of challenging, complex information, mixed opinions, and who can forge a very creative and strategic vision out of that, that's very different than the operations manager, who is responsible for making sure the company runs well on day-to-day -day operations. They're looking at things like whether the regulator is happy, whether their client's needs are being met, whether they're meeting all of the relevant legislation, laws, and rules that apply to their business, whether you know, the finances are on track. Um, all of that stuff is, more, is less ambiguous, is less complex, but it's equally important. So you might have a communications or marketing director who has lower conscientiousness than the senior strategic leader because they're looking at the things that are coming up day to day. They're looking at the wider optics that are going on around and within the company that they might need to respond to. They might be looking at the wider kind of social, political, media issues that is going to affect their business and is also going to affect people's perception of the business. So that marketing communications director might meet, be more adaptive and responsive to things that are going on day to day, week to week, instead of the strategic leader who's looking at things that are happening year to year and the long-term vision, the long-term plan. And so that's why you need that diversity of personality to work together. And you need the people at the senior leadership level and across the company to recognize the value of those differences and what people are adding to their work.